<clears throat> okay. So uh, there is a question about this function, which is a implementation of um, replacement of a particular um, um, pattern with a new pattern in a given text, right? So the signature of the function is uh, we taking an old uh, pattern, replacing with the new pattern, and we doing it in a text. And then we returning a new text. Text in uh, like a string in Haskell is a, basically a list of characters. So we can represent it as a, as a list, right? So we, the, the, this here, yeah, let me maybe uh, copy that. Um, and I will do it in editor because it's a little bit wrongly formatted. And that, that is important. Um, so let me move this. So, uh, yeah, let me first do. Projects. Uh, let's go. Okay. So the, the as we've seen yesterday, the the function replace is already built in, so you don't need to build your own one. But um. A lot of things in Haskell are already built in, but in assignment one, you are told to sort of implement a lot of uh, built-in build -in functions yourself, just as a practice. Uh, and replaces is, is one of those uh, good uh, examples of um, of using recursion and like test like. Um, oh, yeah. So let me see. Okay, I don't want those tabs. I press the wrong button instead of making it bigger. Let me press it one more time. Instead of making it bigger, I made a lot of tabs. Um, so one more time, what is my... Okay, so the code is like this, and I will try to make it bigger. Let's make it bigger. Okay, and now we basically have uh, a Haskell function. Um, which has a signature, so replace has a signature of taking, a, uh, yeah, it actually takes a string, another string, another string, and produces a string. So it takes three strings as parameters, and the final outcome of the, of the processing is a string. And as I as I said, a uh, string can be represented as a, a, a list of characters. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yes. Thanks. I didn't notice that it's missing. Okay, uh, now, now I see your question on the, in the chat as well. <laughs> Sorry, I got kind of distracted. Um, okay, so we have um, a replace function which takes three parameters, uh, three strings and produces a string. And then we will be replacing um, the, um, 
we will be replacing the uh, the characters in such a way that we will go recursively uh, by character by character. Uh, and once we finish replacing the, the kind of the text, then it will be empty, right? So uh, when we get to the empty string, we want to return an empty string. So the end condition for our uh, recursive replacement is this line, which is the first pattern, which says, we don't care what we're replacing with what, but once we have nothing to replace uh, anymore, then it's an empty, empty output, right? So this is the end condition of our recursion. And then uh, what, uh, what happens is uh, we have the old pattern, the new pattern and the text that, um, that uh, needs to be uh, changed. Uh, so if, um, and now we have the, the sort of the logic of, um, we have the logic of what we're doing in the recursive calls. And as you can see, we kind of recalling the replace again here, right? So we, um, replacing old with new in a text recursively. And then we kind of concatenating what the new text is and replacing the, like recalling ourselves back here and here. Um, so first we have this where close. Uh, the where close says, okay, we define size as the length of the um, old pattern. So if the, yeah, let's, let's do some, let's do some example. So we will say replace uh, um, with ma and hello, right? So we will have, We'll have something like this. So then we have old, new, old is he, new is ma, and text is hello. So then uh, the, the size is, in our case, is the length of old, which is two, right? So the size now, size is two uh, and <clears throat> what we do is we take the first, uh, we check if the um, first two characters from text are the same as the, as the old, right? So we, we check if, um, if this, the first two characters of um, of our text are the same as old, then we replace, like we concatenate the new. So, okay, is this condition true in our case? Yes, it is, right? Because the first two characters of hello are our old. So what we do is in this line, we say concatenate the, the new characters, so in, in our case, it will be, oh, come on, come on. In our case, it will be ma concatenated with replace, and we calling replace again with he, ma. And now the text is shorter because we're dropping the two first characters from text, right? So now we have the situation where here instead of hello, we have hello. Correct? So the, the, first, the first line says, okay, if that condition is true, then do this, right? And we did that. And then that's the end. That's the end of the body because we're not doing the else close and where was just defining for us what size was, right? So in the first iteration of the recursive call, we did that. We did map plus plus, and then recursively called this, 
Okay, so now we calling we we executing this part, and then again, it's not the uh, it's not the empty condition like our text is not empty. We still have LLO uh, in the uh, in the text, which means we're not executing that body. We executing again that body, right? So to execute that body, we are checking the condition. Is the first two characters of LLO the same as he? No, it's not. So then we will execute the else close, right? And the H, um, else close says, take the, so now uh, we, remember we have the ma at the beginning already and we kind of doing that part now. So to do this part and we're doing the else close. So we will have the, uh, the ma as we had before plus, and now we're doing the else, which says, okay, take the head of the text and now it, in our case, that the head is L, right? So it says take the L character. Um, oops, single character because we're taking the head, and then call replace on the rest on the tail of the text, right? So we are now concatenating it, concatenating it with the replace of a ma with what was left after we took the head out of the text. So we had LLO and now the head was L and the rest of that string is LO, right? And we doing that. And then again, it's the end of the body because we've done the else close. So we recurse back to replace for this part and we continue for L and for O, right? And what it means is we will end up, we will end up with string, which is ma, concatenated with L, concatenated with L, concatenated with O, and concatenated with an empty list at the end because the, our text will be empty and we will hit this first condition here, which says, well, if we have the empty text, return an empty list, right? So at the end of this recursive calls, we will end up with this expression, uh, this expression, which means we will end up with malo, right? So we effectively replaced he, H E with M A. So we, we actually executed that, right? If we had, let's say we have uh, a hello, right? Uh, instead, then instead of M A here, what would happen is we would have uh, initially character A, concatenated with characters space, uh, concatenated with the, uh, with the replace of what we just did, right? With the replace of the hello uh, text. So we would end up with a, a mellow like this. Will you get it? Um, so if, if we look a little bit at the structure of this program, of this function, we, we are planning to recursively replace a part of the text uh, with the new pattern as soon as it matches, like is as soon as this pattern, as the size matches the old pattern, right? So that's what this line does. This line checks if the, the part, like we, we have our text, and we slide in kind of our replacements. So we start with the uh, with the kind of cursor here, and because the text to replace has two characters, we have to compare two characters. And then we're saying, is those are those two characters the same as the text we need to replace? And if the answer is no, then we move. We move forward by one character and we attach this character to the answer, the, the first one which we dropped. And then we say, is this a sequence which is the same as old? We say no. So again, we take the first character and then we attach it to the beginning of the new, new answer. And then we take those two characters. And then we ask, is it the same as the, as the pattern? And we say, yes, that actually is the same as the pattern, which means we have to drop those two characters and replace it with those two characters or replace it with whatever that is. That actually doesn't have to be two by two, right? So when we, let's say we want to replace 
uh, HE with ma, uh, with mama, right? We have to replace HE with four characters. That's okay, uh, because when we hit this check, it, it checks, is this the same as the old pattern? And the answer is yes. Then what we will do is we will basically say, okay, then uh, drop those two characters, attach those four, and then continue for the rest of the string, which is this. Um, so who got it? Yeah, yes. Yes, it will still work. So if you if you remove the space from here, what will happen is we are doing this. So we're checking is this because our pattern is two characters long, right? So that's what the size says. The size tells us how long is the pattern. Um, so because the pattern is two characters long, first check we're doing for this. So the first check is is so this line checks okay uh, because take size text what it what it what it does it takes the like what it's a, a function take takes a parameter which is a number and the string which is or a list which is um, kind of a list of characters and it returns the number of characters from the list the first number of characters which is in our case it's take to a hello, right? Uh, so we're doing take to a hello, and that gives us a, a, a H, right? Because it's the first two characters from the list. Uh, so we have those two characters, and we say, is it the same as H E as the as the pattern? And the answer is no. Which means what we do is the answer is no, which means we're doing this line. Uh, and this line says, take the head of text, which is uh, head of text is the same as saying, so if I say head of uh, hello, it's exactly the same as saying, take one, take one from uh, hello, which is the same as returning a character A, right? So this line, will do, okay, take A and then replace. So call recursively uh, again. So it will take A um, and then it will, let's delete that. And then remember this we use for concatenating an item of the list to the list. Uh, and plus plus we use for concatenating a list to a list, right? So there are two different operations. Uh, this one will concatenate a single character to a list. Remember, our ans um, the re return of replace is a list. Uh, so then we have um, we have this, right? Because we we have original text is a hello without a space. And then we checked it for a, um, and we attached a here, we moved our cursor to h. So we, we checked it for this, uh, and then it, it was not true. So we moved by one character. So we're not moving the checks by two, we're moving by one if it fails. And when it succeeds, then we move by the, by the uh, side of the, of the pattern, right? So it will work perfectly fine without the space because we checked for this, it didn't work. So we added A, uh, we, we added A to the answer, to the return, uh, and we continue the, uh, we continue the uh, recursive false here and we using the tail, which is tail means drop the, the head and return the rest of the list, right? So we drop the A and we continue uh, with hello. And now when we, when we are executing that part, uh, that means we're checking if HE is the same as the pattern, and it is. So then we're gonna do the replacement, right? And we're gonna drop the, the HE. So when, when the condition hits true, when this condition hits true, then we are actually dropping two characters from the text. 
but when the condition hits false, we only dropping one character and we're moving just by one character. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so uh, Oscar is asking, like he, he was confused by this line. Um, so sometimes reading Haskell is a little bit confusing because of the way that the brackets and, and uh, function works, right? Uh, if I, re <laughs> if I uh, replace it by say Golang uh, expression, right? Or even C++, so I would say like this. So I have a take function, which takes size and text as parameters. Uh, and then it returns a particular um, subsequence from the list, right? And if that is equal to all, uh, then some, something happens, right? Uh, uh, let me do this. So um, this line is sort of equivalent uh, to this, right? So take is a function which takes two parameters. The first parameter is how much I want to extract from the list. And then the second parameter is the list. Um, so let's go. Um, let's make it bigger and let's go to proc, proc six. The hello Fasco and say stuck GACI. So, if you're kind of confused by some of the functions, the best way to uh to learn is to play with them. Um, and to get a feel of what they do and how they work. Uh, so if I go to the, in, like uh, repo, um, and I ask what's, uh, not, not, not the place, stay. Uh, what is the type of take? Um, take takes an integer and the list and returns the list. Okay, so that's simple enough. Uh, there is also like you can also use I. I uh, is like uh, give me some information about something. So it's basically the same. It doesn't tell you much more, but it also tells you that it's defined in the list in a kind of a list module, right? So if I say take three out of a list of uh, one, two, one, two, three, four. I get the first three items of the list, you see? Uh, and if I say take two out of hello, then it will give me HE. So it takes the first two characters. So string is basically the same as list, right? So in, in Haskell, this hello is syntactic sugar is exactly the same as a list of... Uh, uh, five characters, right? So, uh, that's, those two things are exactly the same. So this is just syntactic sugar for this. Um, and then you can use all the same uh, operations. It, it will say true, you see? Uh, if I check is hello the same as the list of those five characters that the Haskell says true, it's, it's exactly the same. Uh, and also you can use like head for hello, it will return H. And if I say tail of hello, it will return hello, right? Uh, so you can just open the interpreter and just play with the functions to, to get used to them, right? And take, uh, and now what, what we're doing is we, we're doing take size, of a list, right? So let's have a list. Let's say L is hello, right? So now I can do head of L and I can do a tail of L and I can do a take two characters from L, right? And now it's sort of, you can see it's HE, right? If I take two characters from, from L, from hello. So when we said if take uh, and, and size we defined as 
length of L, right? Uh, or in our case, it was not L because L is like the text. Uh, we had the pattern which we want to replace. But so if I say HE, it will just give me two, right? So what is size? It's two. Um, in the interpreter, like in the command line he, here in the REPL, you can assign things to variables. Uh, and I think you can, I don't think you can reassign it. Yeah, you can reassign it. So in normal Haskell, you cannot reassign a variable uh, twice. Uh, they are all immutable. So once you define something, like once you define size to be the length of, of HE, it, you cannot change it, but in the REPL you can. Uh, so once you, it's kind of a little bit like Python, you can redefine things on the fly. Um, okay, so um, coming back to the syntax thing, uh, sometimes some, some expressions are a little bit confusing. So this, our one was if, um, if take two from hello equals he, then let's say we print true and else we print false, right? Um, so that, that doesn't use any brackets and it, it is legal, uh, legal expression. Uh, and this is a function, th this is like a condition to if, and you don't need to enclose it in brackets uh, and you don't need to enclose the parameters to take in brackets because uh, Haskell works out what you mean and you don't need to do this typical kind of enclosures uh, for the uh, compiler to work out. Uh, so it kind of, sometimes it, like once you get used to it, it reads very nicely, but when you're getting used to it, sometimes you kind of get, get gets confused of what is a parameter to what, right? Especially if some of the functions are kind of new to you. Uh, so for example, you know, <laughs> this, the equality sign, um, sorry. So if I execute that, it will print true because this condition is true, right? Um, so it works perfectly fine, but you, you know, you, you would expect if taking a condition and then having then taking some action, else taking some action. And then if in if we have a function, we would say function take some parameters, parameter one, parameter two. Uh, and if this function is not Boolean, we have to compare it to something. And then we would kind of close the bracket, right? So let's say if, if calling this function with those two parameters is three, then we do this. And then you visually group things by brackets. Uh, but in Haskell, you don't. You sort of just use space as a, uh, um, um, application of parameters. So that's why uh, we often see, we often see in Haskell, like lines of, of code, which is just um, a lot of words, not separated by brackets or not separated by anything else. And it's, it's kind of takes a bit of using, like uh, getting used to, to reading it, uh, but, so if is a expression, and then you will see then and else, right? So you will see those two, two things and they have to be aligned, right? So uh, yeah, we have like this. Um, so we have, uh, the definitions of the functions for different patterns have to be aligned. And then if can stick out and then, then else ha have to be aligned because they refer to this if. Um, so then you, you see if, and then we will have then and else. And if we will have a condition. So the whole thing is a condition. Uh, and then what is the function and what is the comparison? Well, take takes two parameters. So, you know, and we know it now and uh, Pascal knows it. So take takes two parameters and returns something. So then, this is not a parameter to take anymore. This is just a equality check and all this uh, parameter from here, right? So that's how, how it works. Any other questions?
Yeah, so I encourage you to check the repo uh, and I encourage you to check the, uh, the code. And if you have questions or if you don't understand something after staring at it for a while, uh, then ask and I will try to, to explain. Um, I have to tell you that uh, learning um, other programming languages usually requires you to read stuff and then try stuff out. Uh, in Haskell, there is a lot of staring. <laughs> You will kind of uh, stare at the code for a while. Uh, that that's very usual. It will say, "Why? Why? How does it work? Like, you know, why is it like this?" So sometimes you Google something, you go to Stack Overflow, and you see a piece of Haskell code, and it works. But you just have to stare at it for like a longer time to understand and work out how it is, and try to kind of um, uh, tear it apart. So when you see kind of a longer longer text, like in this case, this one. So try to uh, separate, like, in, in fact, you know, the, this if statement is like this, it's quite complex. It's like uh, uh, three lines of quite complex things, right? And you, uh, if you don't kind of get it initially, then try to decompose it. So say, okay, so if takes a condition, so let's, fir let's first stare at this, what is this only, right? And then try it in the interpreter. And then once you work it out, stare at this right so sometimes things like the concatenation or the uh, concatenation of the element plus this also um, uh, trip you over so when i was learning haskell i often did this i often did i want a first character from my list which will be concatenated with the results of doing replace old new for tail text uh, like this right I, I wrote code like this, but you don't have to do code like this, but that visually groups that this is a character. This is a function head, which takes text as a parameter and returns me something, which is then concatenated with the result of the, of the replace, which takes those uh, three things. And the third thing is the result of calling that function, right? Uh, but in Haskell, you can get rid of the brackets and once you stare, stare at, uh, at the code for a while, you will sort of see that you can basically do this. Sometimes you can replace the final bracket as well and use like the dollar symbol. So sometimes you can do this, um, which is even less brackets and less groupings. Uh, but uh, in this particular case, I think I, I sort of preferred this notation. And this also demonstrates the use of where, right? We are using a uh, size in here and in here. So it is kind of good to have a variable for this uh, because in, in, in fact, what we could have done, we could have done this. We could have say, take size of old uh, and text, and then the same here, right? Instead of using size, we could, uh, no, no, not size length. Um, the length of old, right? We could have uh, wrote rewrote deadline like this, but then it will be a little bit less readable uh, than just defining size and doing it like this with the where close. Um, working out what is the best style is a little bit of an art. Like um, it's. I don't, I don't know the answer. Like, I don't know if, for example, uh, doing it this way or doing it with length is better. Um, it's a little bit up to you to decide what feels simpler and what reads easier, right? Um, so let's do a small exercise. Let's, um, let's uh, replace this and let's rewrite uh, FISBUS, right? So remember FISBUS is uh, for, Things that divide by three, we say this. Uh, things which divide by five, we say buzz. And things which uh, divide by 15, we say this buzz. Otherwise, for other, other numbers, we just say what that number is. So we would say one, two, and for three, we would say 
space, right? So let's write let's write a function um, that converts a number to a text following the FizzBuzz logic, right? Um, so if if I if I tell you um, for a sequence of um, like from one from one to twenty five, print print FizzBuzz words or numbers, right? So that's the task. You are giving a task to write an implementation which will print on the screen uh, the numbers one to twenty-five. Uh, uh, let's say for thirty, so we will have two two fist buzzes. So the spe spec specification is print on the screen numbers from one to thirty using the fist buzz game. And printing fizz buzz or fizz buzz for the numbers which are following that the fizz buzz logic, right? So what would you do in like in Golang? How would you write it in Golang? What would be the kind of a pseudocode that you would do? Anyone from the Zoom? Yeah, so uh, Suzanne suggests that a pseudocode would be a loop uh, from, let's say, 1 to 30, uh, which with some switch, switch or switch or if statements, checking for the, checking for the conditions of the logic, right? That's perfectly fine. Uh, um, checking for this, uh, we, we have to do this logic. We have to do this checks if the number is divisible by three or by five or by 15, right? So that would be the, um, uh, let's say structured programming approach. Okay, so that's perfect. Uh, in Haskell, we don't really have loop. We don't have loops, right? So then that the, the, the loop approach doesn't really work. What we have is we are we having lists, right? And we doing stuff on top of the lists. So in Haskell, uh, instead of a loop, what we would do, like we, we like we do have loops, but we don't have a for statements, right? So here we have a for statement. Uh, but in, in Haskell, because we don't have a kind of a traditional for statement, we will have a loop. So we will have a loop on a list. So what we will have, we will have a list uh, like this. So this is a list from one to 30, and we have to do something on top of that, right? So what one construct that you haven't learned yet is map, uh, but map is very similar to, um, uh, have, you, have you seen map as a keyword in other programming languages? It's in like, uh, it is, for example, in JavaScript um, or yeah, it's in Rust also. Uh, you use map in Python often. So how map works? Map takes a function. So it takes a function and it runs that function. Uh, sometimes it could be called apply, right? Uh, and it calls this function on each element of the list. And then the whole thing gives you back a list, right? So for example, if I, um, if I call it with uh, plus two, right? So let's try it out. Um, so I have uh, map, I have a function plus two, and I have a list of one, two, three what I will get. Well, map will apply plus two function on top of each of those parameters and gives me a list of the results of doing that, right? So one plus two is three, two plus two is four, and three plus two is five, and I got it as a, as a result, right? So it takes a function uh, which takes one parameter, right? So this function can only take one parameter. Uh, and the parameter is this, this, and this. Right, so for our 
uh, for our FIS bus, what will happen is we want kind of a function, FIS, which takes a single number and gives us a string. And the string will be either a number or a FIS or bus, right? So now we basically have um, a pattern uh, of our implementation. So to do this, we will have to do this. And to do this, we will have to define where uh, FIS is something, right? So we have to define FIS. And FIS takes an integer uh, and returns as a string, okay? So now, um, how would you define a function which takes an integer and returns a string for those conditions? So how would you how would you approach it in in, um, in Haskell? So if the if the number is if the int if the parameter is divisible by three, we print fis. So fis takes a number n, and then we have to do some logic, right? So there are different ways of doing it, different ways of expressing it in Haskell. So one way of expressing it is with uh, guards, right? So what we can do is we can say, okay, uh, fist takes an N and then we can use guards. And guards, um, yeah, so first of all, can we use a pattern? Can we use a pattern matching here? Well, we could, not really, but we could try and it would not do really work. So if we say this one, we print, we print text one, okay? Uh, for this two, we will print two. And then for this three, this one is divisible by this, so by three, so we have to print this. And we could continue like that, but that's very tedious. And also we would need to do it up to 30 numbers, right? And we don't want to do that, right? Uh, one rule that programmers use is don't repeat yourself. And you're repeating this like 30 times. That's, that's ugly. Um, so we could do this like this using a pattern matching, um, but that would be very tedious. And also if I say, if I change the spec and say, now I want this to work up to 50, you know, your definition wouldn't work, right? So using a pattern matching is tedious, yeah? You can, you can use underscores, yes, that's right. So, but um, the, the trick here is, so let's say you use this underscore for any other pattern, and then you say something, right? So we, we could say, um, for any other number, print that number, right? Or print, print it as a, as a text, right? Um, but the logic that we want to express is saying, if something is divisible by three, right? And we cannot do it in a pattern. So in a pattern, it only matches what we pass to it, to some variable or to some symbol, and it checks for equality, right? Is it equal to three? But we cannot say, what we pass to it, does it divide by three? We cannot say it in the pattern. We have to do it in a guard, right? So every time you have to match something to a, to a particular value, like we used it here, oh yeah, I deleted it before, but we, we've used for the replace, we've said, we don't care, we don't care. And it, if the third parameter matches an empty list, then do this, right? So if, if something matches a particular value or particular um, number or particular string or particular thing, then we can match it, but it only works for equality. Uh, we cannot do operations on it. If we need to do an operation, then we have to use a guard. So in this case, we need to use a guard. So what, what we will do is we will take N and we will use guards. Uh, and guards allow us to do some operations and check for conditions which are different than uh, pure equality, right? So what is the first condition? Well, the first condition is if N is divisible, so let me find this one. So um, if the reminder of N divided by three is zero, right? That means uh, N is divisible by, um, by three, we print this, 
uh, if n, so if n reminder of dividing by five is zero, then we use bus. And then if n, right, so if I do 15 here, that will not be matched, why? Yeah, exactly, because this condition will, will be true first, right? If I have n divisible by 15, it will also be divisible by three. So this will be a hit first, right? And that it will print me this, which is wrong. So for, um, for 15, I have to move 15 up to here because I want to do n reminder by 15 equals zero. Then I will print this bus. And then if it's three, it's this. If it's uh, divisible by five, it's bus. And then for any other number, I just print the number, right? So here we just basically need true, right? For Because we don't care what the condition is, it will always hit true, right? And there is a keyword for that, which is called otherwise. Uh, in Haskell, we just say otherwise and we print n, right? And n is a number. And remember the signature of this is a string. So we need to convert an integer to a number. And in Haskell, if you want to convert anything to a string, you just say show. Uh, so show takes value of some type, whatever that is, and it represents it as a, as a string. Um, it will fail for some of the user-defined types, but it will not fail for numbers. So this will convert uh, an integer to, to a string. So this is our fizz, and then this will work, right? Um, so if I, right, so let's, let's delete that. Let's save it, and then if I go, Let's test it. So if I quit this, and if I go, yes. So if I say, um, well, let's try. Yeah, this will probably not work. Right, so because I don't have a project, and I cannot run, well, I can. Yeah, I can run the interpreter, but I will have to read this test. So I will load test HS. Perfect, so uh, I can ask, tell me about this. Okay, this takes int and produces a string. So if I face one, I should get one. If I face 15, I should get this bus, right? Seems to work. So if I map map this into numbers from one to 30, voila, I have a list of one, two, face four, bus, face seven, uh, Five, six, yeah, that works because six is divisible by three, seven, eight, this looks correct, right? So now I have a list uh, of um, answers to the FISBAS problem. Uh, they are not printed yet kind of line by line, but then I just have a list so I can do extra things on top of that, right? So now if I have mapped this, of uh, one to 30, um, I can do extra things with it. So for example, I can map a show function on, to on top of the results that I got from the, from the other map, right? Um, and for this one, Pascal is confused, like what is the parameter and what is not a parameter? So I have to, kind of a say, okay, 
um, map takes a function and a list, and the list is the result of doing this processing. So I have to put this, uh, I can put this um, dollar symbol, or I can enclose this into brackets to group it, right? And then it kind of, um, if if I did it in the in this if I did it in a program and run it as a program, it would kind of look nice. It would kind of show um, um, well. We can do instead. Yeah. So th this would this would like in a program. This would print it line by line, but then the interpreter. Um, what it produces, uh, it produces a list of IO actions uh, and then tries to call show on that list of IO actions and the show is not defined on the IO action. So that is a bit complicated. Th this line will work if you do it in a program, but it will not work in the interpreter. So there are some, some little quirks when you're using interpreter that, uh, they, they don't work, but the code is correct. So this is a correct code. It would actually print stuff on, on the screen if you did it in the main function in your program, but in the interpreter, it um, produces a list, same as this one. This one doesn't, um, it converts our string of uh, strings into another list of strings and prints it here like this. Uh, so some, sometimes with the interpreter, it's a little bit, um, complicated. Anyway, coming back here. So is that the only way of, inter uh, of uh, implementing FIS? No, it's not. Is it nice? Is it readable? Yeah, it's what's okay, right? I, I, I don't have much of a problem with this one. Um, how about don't repeat yourself? <laughs> um, well, I kind of repeat this equal to zero, right? Um, this equal to zero is repeated three times. And it, like you may say, yeah, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's such a simple function. It's still readable. It's great. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, let's, let's try, let's try to improve on it. So let's, let's call a fist two, uh, which will be a different implementation of the same function. Um, so let's take string. And then, uh, let's instead of, um, Instead of the <clears throat> um, guards, let's use case. Okay. So what we could do is we could say, okay, let's take case and off. Okay. And now I will have some cases, and um, one case is that um, n is divisible by three. One case is that n is divisible by five. And one case is that n is divisible by both. Okay, so how cleverly can I do that? So I, I basically need three cases. Um, so divisible by three, divisible by um, five, and divisible by fifteen, right? And otherwise, otherwise we print show n, right? So the the end is the same, uh, but I need to do those three cases. And how can I kind of do them cleverly such that I will try not to repeat myself? Um, well, what you could do is you could do some uh, restructuring or destructuring of what n is, right? So n is a number. Uh, and in, in this case here, I was treating n as a number and comparing it to three different things, right? Uh, doing this remind um, the, 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 the division. So one thing that is not su super nice with this implementation is this equals to zero, um, which is very verbose and a little bit like in your face. The other one is if I've already checked if something is divisible by three and by five, I sort of de facto already checking if something is divisible by 15, right? I don't need this line in a sense of checking if something is divisible by 15. And remember when we were writing this code, if this line was not the first one in this in this sequence, that would mean a bug in a program, right? 
it would kind of look correct, but it would not behave correctly, right? If this line was third or second, the program would look kind of correct, but it would misbehave because the checking would happen from top to bottom and that would be a bug, right? So this implementation is not bad, but it has those, it, it kind of feels a little bit weird uh, or could be a little bit improved. So what we can do here is, we can destructure n into a tuple, right? So what, what I can do is I can say, I don't want to be comparing n to anything. I just want to know if n is divisible, uh, sorry, if n is divisible by three, or if n is divisible by five, right? So now, I am not doing case on n, I'm doing a case on a tuple, which tells me if n is divisible by three or by um, five, right? So if, if it is, then I will have zero, zero here. Um, if it is divisible by five, but not by three, I will have zero here. And if it is divisible by three, but not five, I will have zero here, right? So here I return this bus. Here I return a uh, bus because it's divisible by five. And here I return this because it's divisible by three, right? Um, so this is a, exactly the same implementation. It's exactly the same function. It's just written with case instead of guards. And you may say, well, you know, we don't do this equals to zero. So that's an improvement. Um, did we solve the movement of the, of the first check? If I move that one to the second line, will it work? No, it will not work, but it visually tells you that the code is wrong because I have those uh, symbols, which I don't care about, right? So if you have, I don't care before you care, then that's already wrong. Like you already visually see that there is a bug, right? If I moved this line lower, I wouldn't visually see that there is a bug. It's a logical bug, but visually it doesn't tell me there is a bug. Here, uh, if this line was a second line and the first line has, I don't care symbol, then you already know, okay, that, that's a bug because you know you cannot, first don't care about something and then care about something because then I don't care always matches, right? Um, so marginally, this implementation is a little bit better style than this one, but they do exactly the same thing and they, you will probably see both. Uh, if you Google for like how you implement FizzBuzz in Haskell, you probably will see both, right? Uh, but this one is just a little bit of a better style and it's a little bit more, uh, you know, Correct. Um, you could use if statements, right? Uh, you could use if statements, but then you would have those nested if statements. If you, if in Haskell you need to have nested if statements, you're probably doing something wrong. Uh, you, you almost never need nested if statements. Um, as 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 we've seen with replace, if statements are quite dense, they are quite difficult to navigate to to read. So usually they are just single level. Uh, in some of, some of the assignments, uh, you will uh, realize that you will may need to have if statements which are nested, try to work, like work the code around. Okay, so we went a little bit over time. So uh, no, we're not going with the break, right? No, we do, we have a shorter break, right? Yes, so let's have, uh, Let's have a shorter break. So let's have a six minutes break to stretch. And then we will get back to here. Um, so oops, six minutes. Okay, five minutes. Questions?
All right. So any questions related to the use of guards or use of case or if statements? So this is like the basic syntax uh, and you have to familiarize yourself such that you don't need to like look it up uh, because then you will be very unproductive if you have to continuously recall how, how the syntax works. Um, so the guards, you basically use a vertical bar and you have kind of like a condition. Uh, sorry, uh, the guards don't, uh, yeah. So, so the guards use um, the definition symbol. So it's kind of like a part, like the normal function definition is you have uh, some sort of function uh, parameters, params, and then you say equal, and then you, you put what is the definition of the function, right? Uh, so that's like a typical one. Uh, and then if you want to use functional patterns, then you repeat the func, and then you use a concrete text, uh, and then you use like, it will match, by equality, if the parameter is that the one that you pass, then that's what will happen. We very often use it for ending the um, recursive calls, right? So very often when you're doing something on the list, you have the first case which says, for an empty list, do this. For uh, something that is not empty, uh, do this, right? And then you can destructure de the list so into a head, and the rest of the list, or if you want to be concrete about like, okay, for a single parameter, I want to do this. And for a generalized longer list, I want to do something like, a, like this, right? So then generalization of this pattern, uh, pattern matching on lists or on, on parameters is guards. Guards allow you to do some processing, allows you to do a little bit of an extra rather than just a pattern matching on the value. Um, so this is the generalization where you use the, the, the bar and then you have the kind of, uh, you don't repeat the, the name of the function and the, the parameter multiple times. You basically have this, right? Can you mix guards and uh, um, um, function? Matching? Yes, of course you can. So for example, if I defined fist for zero to return, like what should fist for zero return? Um, yeah, may, maybe a uh, bus bus, right? I could do this. So I could say, if we pass zero to fist, it will return bus bus. Otherwise, if we pass something else, it will do this, this guard matching, right? So you can match. Uh, both guards and uh, patterns. <clears throat> and then with the case statement, case is an expression. So case is used not to define functions. Case is basically like a switch statement in any programming language, which evaluates to a value. Uh, and then it, because it evaluates to a value, we distinguish it by not saying equals, uh, but by saying this, um, arrow symbol so it, it says if this sorry if this expression matches with this then this is the result and this is the result of case which means it's the result of the fizz right so this is an expression which returns a value and this returned value is the value which is actually the definition of the of the first two, right? <clears throat> because uh, why I'm saying it? Because what you could say is you could say this. You could say result where result equals this case thing, right? I could have it like this. So case is just an expression. It's, uh, it has nothing to do with defining functions. It has only to do with evaluating to an expression. Um, 
It will probably bite you later once you're doing more complex programs where you would think case or if is like a control sequence that kind of uh, executes something, but it doesn't uh, because Haskell is a lazy language. So if you don't use something, it will it gets never evaluated. Uh, so you know it, it's all about passing values from from function to function and like evaluating things to things and returning things. So it's yeah. Anyway, I, you, you will see it later. Uh, so this is like a guards pattern matching on functions and case statement and if statement. And remember that if statement always has to have uh, else close. Uh, because if 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 expression is not a statement, it's an expression, so it evaluates to a resulting type. Uh, you will notice also that we never really say return, right? Uh, we don't say return result. We just say okay, it is a result. Um, so that's another kind of a mental thing that you have to do. So functions in Haskell are always return the value. And it's always that sort of the final thing that the, the function has. Um, and you don't say return. Uh, you will use return for uh, IO monad and for uh, returning IO actions and for returning something from, uh, like for wrapping something into a monad. But we will talk about it in a couple of weeks. So you will see return statement, but it's not same as return in other programming languages. Okay, so this, I will save this, I will quit this, and we will go back to the slides to check what should I be talking about. Um, okay, so yesterday we finished at um, some of the quizzes. Yeah, so then we have some short programming exercises. Um, uh, and then we, yeah, so we did this one. So we did the swap yesterday. Uh, the first one is show them as a comma separated row, right? Um, so we want to have a function. Uh, so let's, let's try to do that. Um, um, code test. So we want to have a function um, which um, converts a list of numbers uh, into a comma separated string, right? So uh, we want to define something like this. Let's, uh, let's call it CSV converter. Uh, and it will take a list of integers uh, and it, would, it will produce a string for us. And the integers are kind of a like comma separated. Um, so first thing is, why do we use int? Can we use any type here? The answer is yes. Uh, the code will look pretty much the same. Uh, so you have to ask yourself, do I want to constrain the type to int or do I want to be generic? Like, uh, and it, again, it depends what you're doing, right? If your function will be used in a context of numbers only or integers, then don't make it generic. But if you don't kind of know, and if you don't care, then make it generic, right? So what we could do is we could, could try make it generic. Uh, if we want to constrain it with the, that it only be used for numbers, then we could say, uh, number A, right? Um, so the single arrow is, you've already know it's sort of like a parameter, parameter return. Uh, the double arrow is type constraints. So that defines constraints on the type variables. Um, if we don't have this, we can, we can delete this. And then A is a variable for a type and it's not constrained by anything. But if we said, a has to be a number, then we constraining what A can be, right? Uh, we, again, we will come back to that later when we will be doing more complex types. Uh, here, let's focus on the logic. So a CSV converter will take, um, um, 
it, it will take a number uh, array. So, so uh, sorry, list of numbers, and it will produce a string, right? So we have to think, okay, how we want to implement it. Well, uh, we need to um, do something iteratively on the list because we like, you know, we have to take an element, uh, put it on the screen, put the comma behind it, put the space, and then uh, do some 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 manipulation. So we will need some form of a loop. Will will we will we use a recursion? If we will use recursion, then we have to stop the recursion if we have the empty um, uh, empty case, right? If if the conversion is passed with the empty um, empty thing. Um, so I I yes, there are multiple ways of doing it. Again, I would say yes, we probably will use recursion. So if we are uh, passing an empty uh, array, then we returning an empty string. Uh, so then if we're not passing a, um, an empty list, we are passing a list with a number and the tail of numbers. And we want to return this number as a string uh, concatenated with a comma space, right? And then uh, concatenated with the rest of the con uh, CSV converter, which will be converting our NS. Does that look correct? Well, it sort of looks correct. Um, it may, let's, let's save it uh, and then let's try it. So what we're doing here is, well, we have a list of numbers we taking the first number and we converting it to a text then we saying comma space and then we converting the rest of the um of the numbers so what is not super nice here with this implementation Okay, maybe you don't see it yet. So let's try it first. So let's try it. So uh, step CI. We load our test.hs and it says there is a problem compiling that sequence. So this de de definition of the function gets confused of what you mean by you know concatenating it. So that's kind of like a syntax problem because we need to say we actually did structuring the list and we need to put it into uh, brackets. So let's re rerun it. Um, and it says, well, uh, otherwise equals is also a syntax problem um, because case as I was explaining is not using equals it's using this right so now we fix those two prob two syntax problems and it says well it kind of uh, this concatenation here looks wrong because of this plus plus and this conversion to a string. So again, it's very likely syntax problem. So let's try and closing this into brackets, saving it and reloading it. Uh, it still doesn't like it. It still doesn't like uh, this and this, right? So maybe we don't need, maybe we need a brackets here. Let's try that. Uh, no, we have 
uh, a complaint. Yeah, in fact, we don't want the brackets there, right? Because what we do is we concatenate this. Oops. Logically, we're doing this. So logically, we're saying uh, create a list which is uh, the first. Um, yeah. So show n converts a, a number to a string, and then string concatenated with a string. We cannot use that the single dot. We uh, the colon. We have to use this, and then we concatenating the resulting thing with the rest of the processing maybe we don't need brackets here let's try if i used um yeah so n is a number and show n is a function Try that. Let's read what it says. Okay, could not deduce show A arising from the use of show from the context of num. So it's it tells us that generically numbers don't have show, right? So we cannot show generic numbers we have to be more specific about our uh, our type such that we can use the show. So if I use an integer and I say, uh, okay, screw that genericity, we don't care for generic functions for now. And because we're using show of the number, then uh, let's constrain it to just integers. Um, so then did I save it? I think I saved it. So, so now it doesn't complain. So it says, okay, now, now everything is fine, right? Uh, we probably using too many brackets. Uh, so if you use an IDE, uh, more intelligent the code, it may tell you that you probably don't need some of the brackets. So let's try that. Yeah, I don't need that one, for example. Yeah, anyway, I will not be simplifying it. So we have we have this implementation which uh, converts our list of integers into a CSV converter. Tell me about it. Well, it takes a list of integers and produces a string. So let's try running it on um, one, two, three. And it works, it produces a string which has one comma space, two comma space, three comma space, and that's not the nice bit, right? So the not nice bit is that it works, but at the edge, it basically um, converts, it converts um, up to an, an empty list, and then it, produces an empty string and still uses this uh, comma uh, thingy at the end for the for the empty like once we exhausted our list like we did it for one for two for three and now we're doing it for the empty list and then for the empty list we still add, add up end up with this call and this call concatenates is concatenated at the end right so that's why we see three uh, empty, um, like empty string. So how can we get rid of that? Any ideas? Yep. Perfect, exactly. So if we can add a pattern uh, which says, well, if we only have one element, we don't want to be concatenating this comma thingy. Uh, what do we want? We just want to return this, uh, let's call it n, 
just such that we differentiate it from, from the type parameter, right? Um, so if, if our list only has one element, we just use that one element, right? So the other side effect here is that um, I, I'm not reloading it yet. So if I'm converting a list which has one element, we're gonna get this one element comma space, right? And that's not what we want because it's just one element, we just want one, right? So it will also fix that problem. Uh, so now, did I save it? Let's see, no, I didn't save it. So save. Uh, we reload it and now we call it for the single number. Okay, well, that, that's solved, that's nice. Let's try it for one, two, three. That's solved too, right? Great. So we kind of took advantage of the pattern matching to deal with the empty list and to deal with a list of single character or single number. And then we basically solved it by doing this sort of a recursive call, right? Are there other ways of doing, of solving this? Yes, there are other ways. Um, so this implementation is perfectly fine, uh, but it's, um, uh it, it uses three lines of code <laughs> Th those are not super complex lines of code but it would be nicer if we were a little bit more um succinct so let's let's do this um let's in, in, in implement it in a single line right so um so csv conf will take a list as a parameter uh, and it can be an empty list and it can be a list of a single number or it can be a list of multiple numbers. So now if we want to implement it in a single line, we have to take advantage of building functions which deal with lists. And when a list is empty, they will basically produce sort of a, an empty thing, right? So one of such functions you know already about is called map. Right, so map will call a function on a list, and if the list is empty, the result will be empty anyway because it's a kind of a empty list, right? If the list has a single element, it will call this function on a single element, and then if the list is um, more uh, uh, longer, it will kind of do that, right? So one thing that we already know is a map. So if we say map show on list what it will produce for us yeah let, let's play in the interpreter first so if i have a list which is our one two three right so i have one two two three and then i call map show on l what what i will get i will get a list um, of strings which are converted from, from numbers, right? So if I do this, I will get this. If I call it with an empty list, I will get an empty list. If I call it with a list of a single character, I will get a single character. Okay, so we're dealing with the three cases uh, by simple manipulation, but the result is a list. It's not a string yet, right? So now I need to... Um, um, I need to do something with this list or this empty list to compact it to a, um, to a single list, right? Um, so let's, let's, go, let's go to Google and help ourselves and ask for all the functions. So give me all the functions which take uh, a list of lists and produce a list, right? Maybe we will get kind of a, well, one is concat, right? So concat takes a list of lists and gives us a list. Okay, looks good, it's in base, so we should be able to use it. So what concat, what if we try that? Um, okay, let's see. Okay, looks promising for an empty string. Looks promising, really promising. So for L, 
looks great, right? It works, it works for our case, but it doesn't give us the comma separated values. It just compacts all the values to a single string for us, right? Uh, so we need to do one more thing, right? So we need to um, inject, um, we need to inject something between our values, right? So currently what we have, um, so currently what we have is one, two, three. What we want is we want to have one comma space, two comma space, three, right? So we want to um, <clears throat> inject something into, um, into, the, into the list of strings. Well, uh, let's try searching for it. So we want a function which takes a string, uh, another string. I, actually, it's not a function that is on strings, it's a function on lists, right? So we want, um, we want a function which takes an element of the list, <clears throat> a list, a list of those things and gives us a new list of those things um, with this element being interspersed in the list. And it's kind of called interspersed, right? Uh, we already see it here um, that it takes an element, a list, and gives us a new list. Let's try it. So let's try intersperse of, um, intersperse four in the list of one, two, three, or oh, three, right? Yeah, I don't need those spaces. Um, so inter, uh, did I roll the wrong? Uh, let's see. Intersperse and it's a item and a list. So intersperse and it's defined in base and in list. It might not be defined in prelude. So let's check intersperse. No, it's not. So if I, um, yeah, I cannot really load it uh, because I cannot add a module called data list. Here, no, I can. Okay, so how about how about intersperse now? It works. Okay, so how about we test it? Well, voila, you see. So I got one, four, two, four, three, right? So how about intersperse? If I intersperse comma space into um, into a list which has one. Two and and three. I have one comma space two comma space three. Perfect. So how about we go back to our original show L and on like remember what this one does? Map show L converts our list, which is one, two, three, into sequences like strings, one, two, three. So now if I use that and intersperse, intersperse, comma, space into this, what I will have is one, comma, space, two, comma, space, three. And now all we need, well, now all is left to do is concat. Right, so we can cut whatever that one did, and we end up with one comma two comma three. Uh, let's test it with an empty empty list. We get an empty string. That per that's perfect. What about a single number? That's perfect too. Right. So you see, our implementation works, and our implementation is effectively. Um, uh, no problems. 
see now where is my yeah so our implementation is map show list uh intersperse intersperse um comma space and concat Right, so that's our single line implementation of the three liner. Uh, we replace those three lines with that with that single line. It's noticeably a little bit more complicated because we taking advantage of map, we taking advantage of intersperse, and we taking advantage of contact. Right, but because you will be used to those functions and you will be using them frequently. You will kind of like this implementation, this one liner better than the three liner above. Um, there is another shortcut that you can do, which is um, uh, called intercalate. Um, and this one looks like this it takes a list uh, and a list of lists and produces a single list. Uh, and this is kind of like what we were doing with intersperse, but without um, like you, you see it's a, an, a list, a list of lists, and it gives us a single list. So it kind of looks as a combination of intersperse and concat into a single call. And that's what intercalate really is. So we could simplify we could simplify this implementation by uh, basically doing this. Right, so let's test this. Uh, so if I have my this thingy and I say instead of concat intersperse, if I say interlate. Uh, you see it basically does the same thing as the previous line, but now instead of two functions, instead of combining concat with inter intersperse, we just have a single function, right? Uh, and that function is super useful. I mean, all three are super useful, but in this particular case, this one is the one we want, right? So this one is the, eventually we have this one liner, uh, and this one liner reads really well because, you know, we, uh, this one converts our list of numbers into a list of strings. And this one injects comma separated thingy between those uh, string numbers and con concats into a single string, right? And that's the, like, that's the um, kind of the best implementation of the, of the task, right? All right, so going back to our slides, we did that, that one yesterday, and we did this one today with, the, with learning about intersperse, concat, and intercalate. Uh, and you play with those functions in the interpreter to kind of uh, memorize them because they are very useful. They are useful for solving a lot of different problems on lists, uh, and they make your implementations kind of com compact. Uh, so this is a very nice compact implementation of the task of converting a list of numbers into a string, comma separated string, right? Okay, so that's it. We run out of time again. Uh, if you will have questions, yeah, I know, uh, often running out of time. Uh, and if you have any questions, then uh, post them on uh, Discord or an issue tracker. And then if you will have questions related to the material that we covered so far, bring them on on Monday. So, yeah, thanks a lot. Pascal time, yeah, some recursions and some list manipulations. <laughs>